welcome to Verticals Learn Something. Um, as many of you know, but not everybody, Vertical Learn Something was born as the COVID pandemic set in and everybody shifted their lifestyle to be at home. After a lot of discussion and brainstorming, we realized that many people don't have an avenue to get outside of the house and to distract themselves or to learn something new. So we came up with Vertical Learn Something so that we can all take a break once a month or so, learn something new, have some socializing. And then when we get back to work, we feel a little bit more rejuvenated and inspired and ready to do some new things. A really important reminder is that Vertical Learn Something is powered by leads and referrals from everybody who attends and watches. If you have anybody who needs to learn about a communication system, or if you need one yourself, or if you want to forward it to somebody else, just let us know. I've put in the chat box the raffle that you can enter in that information for. And when you enter into that raffle, um, you will also get to receive, if you win, one of Jessica's fine art prints. She does beautiful, beautiful wildlife <laughs> art. She's actually working on something for me right now, and I would tell you more, but my husband's in the other room, and I'm pretty sure he can hear. <laughs> and it's for him. So anyway, um, with that, I'll hand it over to you, Jess. Okay. Hello, everyone again. Okay, so I don't know if you got to see the actual image of what we're going to be painting, but I'll try to bring it up closer. So this is... A painting of a galaxy and I just have it sort of in the shape of a heart and this is really really simple you don't have to make it exact um, it's just going to be kind of like a loosely done thing and I'll show you as we go along and there will definitely be times when you want to keep adding more detail um, and then there's times that we'll just have to keep moving on and you, you can come back to that so the first thing the most important thing is that we got to lay down the black so it gets time to dry so I'm going to go over all of our supplies, but first I want us to lay down the black and then I'll cover all of that. So whatever size canvas you have, I suggested the eight by eight inch canvas, but you can really use anything. So you have a canvas and then you have your plate or tray or whatever you have to lay the paint on. So go ahead and grab whatever black you have and lay some down. And without adding any water to it, because we want it to dry pretty fast, go ahead and grab your widest brush. So this one is a 3 fourths wide brush. Let's see if you can see it. Where am I going? Yeah, so whatever large brush you have, what we're going to be doing is not covering the entire thing. We're going to kind of leave a space in the middle of the shape of a heart. So go ahead and load up your paintbrush. If you want, you can lightly trace a heart just so you know where it's going to be. Just kind of like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to keep layering. So once you got that, then go ahead and fill in all this outside area with that black. If you have any trouble kind of blending it in, you can add a little bit of water to your brush, but not a lot. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Just go ahead and work on that. For some reason galaxies are like one of my favorite things to paint because you can get messy with it and it still looks good. And if your canvas has an edge to it you can always paint the edge if you want. You don't have to. I always think it looks nice when you do but it's up to you.
Does anybody have home projects they're working on? Way too many. It's excessive. <laughs> I was like, I can still go to Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> They'll still let me in there. Yeah. I have the supplies to paint my front porch, but not like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you'll, you could add a little galaxy in there somewhere. <laughs> you'll have so many more skills to apply, <laughs> Fran. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I tried staining my porch for the first time and I did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? Because <laughs> maybe like a month later, it started like peeling up. Oh, no. Yeah. And I was like, I thought it was a stain. I must have put it on too thick or something. Mm. Projects always take twice as much time to deal with all of the mistakes that we all make. Oh, yeah. Learn as you go. And I've been getting into gardening because why not? Yeah, it's a great time for it. How's everybody's progress going? Feeling good? All right, got good. Some. I did suggest if anybody had a hair dryer, you could throw the hair dryer on there after you get the black down to dry it. Um, but we should be okay if you don't. And it's good to kind of work your paintbrush into the grooves of the canvas because you can kind of see that like little texture it leaves. So as long as you get like a nice full coverage Get all those little white, white spots on the canvas filled up. I'm bummed I missed the baking class. Keep putting myself on mute and then forget. Yeah, that was unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. Well, did I ever send you the video? I can still do that. Yeah, that'd be cool. I didn't get it cool. yet. I'll send it over. Rebecca and I will be happy to do that with you again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had the day wrong, so I got all set up with my ingredients, and I'm like trying to log in and be like, "Where? What am I doing wrong here? Where is everybody?" <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I make cookies anyways. It is definitely fun to do these things and learn the new, the new skills. Like I'm, I'm not a cookie person myself or a painting person, so now I can say in the last month I'm doing two new things. That's exciting. Nice. I'll have to see if these colors are going to work because they were stored out in my garage for about two years. So what appears the acrylic is a tube inside of this with a bunch of uh, liquid, uh, mm -hmm. but it appears to be solid on the inside of here. Oh, well done. So ah, we'll, like separated? Yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't have left them in the garage for so long. Do you have any other blues? Uh, I have some indigo and I stuck some white in it to see if it would turn to blue and it turned to aqua. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll make that work. Let's see. Um, Huh. I'm not sure that's going to, yeah, that's still a solid tube inside there. Oh, well. I'll have to dump it out and get a paint stirrer on the end of a drill. <laughs> do you have any purple? Um, I do have purple, but it was also stored in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, purple's a little better. There we go. Yeah, so when I um, have you guys use blue, just go ahead and use that purple instead. Okay. 
How's everybody's black looking? It looks lovely. Sweet. Mm -hmm. So what you can do with that paintbrush uh, when you are finished is just use your paper towel and wipe off that extra so that when you put your paintbrush in the water, it doesn't um, dirty it up as much. Okay, I'm just going to talk about some of the other supplies I have while we give that black a chance to dry. Um, so we've got the black paint. Uh, another one that you're going to need is white. So I have a titanium white, but any kind of white's good. I also suggested, if you have it, two different types of blue. Um, so the ones I have is aqua, aqua marine and uh, another type of blue. I don't know if you could see it in here. You don't have to. You can just use a one blue if you have it. And then if you have magenta, if not, you can use red. And then yellow. So all the colors that we're going to be making this painting with will be those. And you want to help us mix some colors so we can make different colors? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you want to do like your own custom colors or if you want my help trying to figure out how to make something, just let me know. I had the same problem with Daryl with my white and I realized that one was chunky and one was all liquid, but I mixed them together and it's, it's something now. So we'll mm -hmm. figure out how that goes. <laughs> I tried adding um, nail polish remover to my nail polish because it was really dry. I've always wondered if that works. It doesn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. It doesn't. Does that work with paint thinner and dry paints? I don't know. I never use, um, I guess that would be with oils. I never use oils really. Hmm. Like I know acrylics um, take like 24 hours to fully cure. So even though it's dry to the touch, you could still add water to it and thin it out. Mm. Um, but as long as your painting right now is basically dry to the touch, we can move on to the next step, which will be here. I'll show you that painting again. Um, so kind of to outline what we're going to do. So we've got that black down. The next thing we're going to do is use our sponge and we're going to start to add in blues that just kind of go around like a border. And you're really just kind of dabbing it. So when you've got that blue dabbing on the black, you can see it's kind of harder to see. That's okay. We want this kind of faded look. And then it gets a little bit brighter towards the white area in the center. So once we get the blue down, then we're going to do this sort of light yellow in the center. And then we're going to move on to the white. Cool. And then after that, we'll add in more details. So for now, we're just going to do the blue. We're going to go around the edges. It's going to get messy. So if you don't have gloves on like Becca, just know that's what's going to happen. But that's the fun part. All right, so I am going to lay down both blues. And white. I'll show you. So now we're going to be shifting over to our sponges, but if you want to use the paintbrush just to mix the color, you can. So just going 
grab some of my blue, pull it down here. I'm just adding a little bit of water to it. And then I'm going to start to use my sponge. And all we're doing is dabbing it around that whole border. When you start off, it's just going to kind of look like that. We just keep building it up. Does the water just make it thinner so it sponges better? It does, but you don't want to use too much because then it'll make it too transparent. Um, so a lot of times on my paint palette, I usually never put enough paint. I'm always putting more on, but I don't like to waste it. So if you need more paint, just get more paint. How's it going, Daryl? Did you find something that works? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's mostly going to end up aqua, not blue, because I didn't realize when I pull all these uh, paints from the from the garage that were going to be so dry because several. But yeah, that's okay. It's your own interpretation of the yeah, galaxy. I think it'll work. You love that. Yeah, that's what's fun about these. There's no real right way to do it. So one thing you can do too is kind of like start to maybe sprawl out the color in a little areas. So this part, don't worry about it being perfect either. We're just going to kind of lay down all the colors and then you can go back and fine tune it. So with that same blue that you have on there, on your sponge, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of white. Putting a tiny bit of white on that blue. Going to dab it on my palette so it kind of mixes. And then I'm going to lay that lighter blue on the inside of that one I just did. Because we want the galaxy to be kind of like glowing from the center. So the colors are going to get lighter as it goes in. I can see if you can see what that's doing. Kind of got that lighter blue. And you can kind of bring that lighter blue into the darker blue a little bit just to blend it. And I took my sponge and I ripped it up into a bunch of little pieces so that you can trade out the sponges for different colors. Is that color working out for everyone? I think so. Cool. Mm -hmm. I think so. All right. I feel like we have a bunch of very focused artists over here. It's very I quiet. I don't want to break your concentration. <laughs> okay, so should be somewhat close to that. Do you guys want to show me what you have so far? Cool. All right, let's see what you got. 
Yeah, Can you see me? Ooh. Oh, love it. Way Let's to go. See. You got a pink sky. Very cool. So far. Yeah, that looks great, you guys. All right, so we're going to move on to the next color. And you can go back and um, touch up the spots that you have right now, if you'd like. Um, I'm just going to lay down some yellow. And when your yellow hits the blue, it's going to get a little green color. So that's kind of cool. Where'd you get yellow? Oh, the old yellow is on your thing. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna I'm gonna take a new sponge and I'm gonna mix white with that yellow so to make it a little bit brighter. Oh there's blue. Put it in different color. If you use your sponge to mix it, just make sure you dab your plate a bit so that you have it nice and blended. And we're going to want to do basically the same thing we did with the blue. We're going to hit that border. Leaving the very center for white. And you can drag that yellow into the blue a little bit. I haven't been adding any water. I've just been using the paint straight to the canvas. So we're trying to maintain that heart shape as much as possible, but everyone's heart is different. <laughs> Daryl, is that yellow working for you? Um, let me unmute if I'm not muted. Uh, my yellow is solid as a brick, unfortunately, but I got a little bit of red and a little bit of white, and it'll be <laughs> close-ish. Yeah. Oh, Sienna. Use any colors you like, as long as it's getting lighter towards the center. Mm -hmm. uh, is orange solid? Required this. Looks pretty solid. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's burnt sienna. Terracotta red, kind of. And what you're going to want to do with that open space is just to get pure white. So definitely use a clean sponge if you have it and just dab in the remaining space. 
Even though the canvas is white, you still want to lay white paint down because it's going to blend in the edges. So that's basically where we should be. And again, if it's not quite there yet, you can always go back and mess with it a little bit more. At this point, you can use any kind of colors that you want. So I have the sort of like pinks that I added in there and aqua colors that are sort of random. And you can see they're just kind of like hitting little areas. There's no like correct way to do it. It's just kind of like little spots. I wanted to add a little bit of color. And that kind of helps just create more interest in it. Spot nudity. Mm. So if you have red, you can just add a little bit of white to it or the magenta. I'm going to start off with just straight magenta and see what that looks like and then add white if I need it. Somebody have any questions? You get points for texture. Absolutely. <laughs> Rebecca, you're going to get a kick out of this. The uh, sponges I borrowed from my daughter have some dog hair in them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm pulling dog hair, not dog hair, it's actually my hair out of the paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> actually, I knew of a artist, I don't know where I heard this from, but she would actually put either her hair or her saliva in the painting so that if she was ever famous that she could prove that it was hers. Mm, next wow. level. That's some dedication. <laughs> What's good about this technique is if you mess up, like I don't know what I was doing, I just threw out some white right there. You go right over top of it. Don't know what that is. Goodbye. Once we get all of our colors down or close to where we're happy, the next step will be adding in all of the stars, which is pretty simple. As long as you got that toothbrush. If you don't got a toothbrush, a paintbrush will still work.
just adding in that second blue that I laid on my palette. It's a little bit more turquoise. Even though I said it's supposed to get lighter in the center, if you have little bits of lightness around, that helps kind of drag your eye. So if you want to add like a little lighter blue, kind of in like little skirted areas, um, you can. Just don't add too much. And you can see that this is by no means perfect, but it will be. How's everybody feeling so far where they're at? Do you I have don't any know. With anything? I am a mess. I have paint everywhere. I'm t afraid to touch my face. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's probably already on my forehead. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I, I have got one glove on. I should have done two. I always end up getting channeling Michael's not a good thing. It's a good thing. It is a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes too, you can use a dry sponge and just with nothing on it and just kind of dab over the wet paint to help blend it. So just to keep on track with time, I'm going to show you how to start doing the stars and even after we have the stars down, you can still go back in and touch up the colored areas if you want. So for the stars, does everybody have a toothbrush to do this part? Yep. Yes. Okay. Well, let me go get one. Okay. Now, speaking of making a mess, you're going to make a larger one. So for the stars, what we want to do is get some of our white, make sure that there's no other color mixed in with it. And I'm just going to use a clean brush just to grab some of that white. And we want to really water it down. 
so that when we flick it, we're gonna we're gonna put it on the toothbrush and then we're gonna flick it with our finger that it spreads nice and even. So all I'm doing is taking my white, adding a little bit of water to it, and mixing it up. So it's kind of like soupy. So I got this watered down white. I'm going to load up my toothbrush with it. Just kind of swirling it on there. And if you want to test it out just to see what kind of splatter you get, what I'm doing um, is I'm taking my thumb and I am pointing the toothbrush down and then just running my finger over it. And then just go ahead and start off slow when you do it just to see what kind of splatter it gives you. If it doesn't look like enough is on there, you probably just need to add more paint or add more water to your paint. And that's just my technique of splattering it. Um, looks like I see someone else just kind of tapping on it, tapping on the, the stem of it like this. But so for mine, I'm just going to test it out. I'm going to flick it on the paper. If I like how it looks, I'm going to go with it. And you can put the stars all over. Or you can kind of concentrate it in little areas. If you look at like the galaxy, the galaxy kind of like groups the stars together in like little ribbons almost. Um, so if you want to try to mimic that, you can. So for now, let's just go ahead and look it over the whole canvas. And you're going to get all different kind, all different sizes, which is good. So the more paint you have on your brush, the bigger the dots are going to be and how close you have it to the canvas too is going to make a difference. So you can have some areas where it's just like a huge cluster of stars and then other areas where there's just like a couple. And then we're going to hand paint in a couple of the larger ones too. Is that technique working for everybody? Beautiful. Cool. So I dropped a huge blob of paint off to one side, so apparently now I'll have a nebula. Yes, there you go. Let me figure out how to get it off. Turn it into planet. That's a great idea. See, it's like the happy mistakes. <laughs> we didn't think of it until it happened. I would totally leave it and turn it into a little planet. So once you got a good little splatter there, um, we're going to go ahead and switch over to one of our smaller paintbrushes. I was suggesting a round one and two. So the one is like a pretty skinny one and it helps to do these like little rays coming off. Um, 
if you want to save the one for that, I'm going to grab the two and just start making some larger dots. And they're just sort of random. I have some that are kind of grouped together in a little area and then just a few that are spaced out. So I'm going to use actually a very light blue to make the first little dot. So I'm just taking a blue, mixing some white into it. And I'll try to bring this up close. So you can see I'm just doing like a little blue dot. And I'm just gonna repeat that little blue dot around. Total random. And then on top of the blue dot, that's when I'm gonna put the white. So it's kind of like a burst of color. So it's bright in the center. And you can also do other colored dots. I mean, if you were to look up at the sky, um, there's still gonna be like yellow and red dots. So it's kind of fun to mix in those with it. So if you wanna put a couple little speckled yellow or red or pink or whatever you'd like. That's weird. My uh, phone camera stopped working. We will, oh. oh. You can restart it and log back on, Jess. Okay. Can you hear me still? Yes, I can hear you. everybody's little stars going. Good. We do the blue dot and then put another color inside. Is that right? I thought it was a white I don't dot. Know how to do the star. A white dot? Okay. Yeah, and that's then what pull I thought. It out from there? But I could definitely be okay. making that up. So don't quote me too much. Well, if it's working for you, I'm good with that. I feel like it's so working the blue dot. Right. And then put the white star or the white dot in the middle and pull it out for a star. Yes. Or are you working now? Hi, I see your face, Jess. Hey. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You're doing a great job. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna use one camera. I can't do two. <laughs> That is okay. Can you hear me on this one? Yep, can hear you great. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. 
Okay. I'm hearing myself talk back a little bit though. Do you have your other phone still on? Perhaps. Let me see. Um, that one is off now. Uh, still happening? I don't know. Nope, it's not. Cool. All right. So um, I'm just going to show you up here what, what I got going on. So I've got those random blue spots in there. I'm just going to put a dab of white in the center, even smaller. One little trick you can do is use the backside of your paintbrush. You can uh, use that to kind of dab in the white if you want. I'm not adding any white to it. I'm just going to put it right in the frame. So, let's see. Hmm. Sorry. Better view. Yeah, as so you can see, it's just like a little white dot right in the center of that blue. Perfect. So this is kind of where we do like the little details now. If you want to do like little shooting comments, I'll kind of show you what I did for those. I did a little light blue tail and then just a white dot for the shooting part. Cool. Okay, so when you do the star sort of rays that come out, um, it basically looks like, kind of like a like a plus sign. Um, just make sure that they're all going the same way. You don't want them like kind of turned at all. Like they all need to be going. They can be whatever you want. Just make sure that they're all the same. So mine is just kind of up and down. Um, so just kind of bring it in closer. Just kind of want thin little white lines shooting out. And they can be as big or small as you want. And that kind of gives it a little sparkle look. So for that one, I'm using my number one. And it does help to water down the white for this. And what I like to do is to start and the like right up to the star and then flick out because when you flick out it usually gets smaller as you let the paintbrush up so i'll start right next to it and go out and as you go out lift the paintbrush up and it'll give you a smaller line at the edge Oh, just like that. Hmm. If you think you messed up at all, just grab some of the color underneath, the blue or black or whatever it is, and you can just paint right over it. Kind of cool to have some maybe larger than the others, just to give it variety. My comments are terrible. I'm upset with them. I don't believe you. Oh well, I'm painting over them because they're they're pretty bad. <laughs> Your comments go well with my stars. They're all one big happy galaxy. <laughs> How's your nebula, Daryl? Uh, I think it turned out okay. Can I see? Oh, yeah. Let me get done with what I'm doing the second. Where's the, where's that? The center? Um, 
No, it was over here. I just ended up wiping it off. Oh, yeah. That's great. Oh, that's Can't even great. Tell. Very cool. Love it. You can see with the right brushes, it would be easier to do this. <laughs> yeah, when you start doing those little details, it uh, definitely helps to have good brushes for it. My hand shakes when I do these little lines sometimes. All right, I'm going to do a little planet just because we talked about it. What color planet? Are we talking like Jupiter or? No, I think uh, it's going to be maybe Mars-ish. Hmm. going to be kind of a warm, warm, uh, orangey color. So as you can see, this is kind of one of those paintings that you could just keep playing around with. But I hope you guys are having fun with it. This is yes. awesome. Basically, when you work with acrylics, you always start off with larger brushes and then you squeeze your way down to little details. Do you even do that with your wildlife pieces? Yep. Actually, I have one I'm working on right now. Um, this one is, I just started, so it looks weird, but it's going to be a baby fox and elephant. Oh, cool. I love it. So I just start off with really broad strokes and then I just keep going back and fine tuning it in more and more detail. I love it. That's really cool. Are you enjoying oh, branching can out? You show it? Sorry? I think Fran wanted to see it. So this is just the start. Did you, it? Did you show it? Yeah. It's oh, gonna be, very cool. Yeah. Gonna be oh, I love it. Yeah. Maybe nice. I'll box. Yeah. We're working on it. And then just keep working on it. What were you asking, Rebecca? Are you enjoying getting to expand your wildlife pieces? I am, because I normally probably wouldn't have done it until people are like, hey. <laughs> what else can you well, do? Since I'm in Frisco, I have a picture here that my daughter did of one uh -huh. of my dogs from a long ago. Very cool. Let's see it. That's adorable. Oh, yeah. Okay. So of course, I have it framed here in Frisco. I could just take it off the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you guys are having fun painting. I encourage, you know, think of uh, subjects that you guys like so if it's animals or something right outside your window or anything at all you should uh, just keep practicing if you like it yeah all right well unfortunately How long have you been painting jessica um oh sorry go ahead I remember i've always remember painting just for fun or if it was for school or our class was always like my yes Right. <laughs> so um end up getting a awesome. degree. In yeah. I enjoy it. And I can do it from home. So that helps. Oh, that's great. That's really great. Little, 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 little plant. <laughs> He's cute. 
Well, I've got a couple messages I think I need to probably go and deal with, and I'm going to call mine done, but I think it turned out okay. It's I love good. it. Awesome. Nice. That's Very beautiful. Good. Second That's page. A good base to start with, and I can always come back and work on it some more. Yeah, absolutely. Felix are good for that. Thanks yeah. for joining in. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate you doing this. Yeah, absolutely. All right. It was nice to meet you. You too. Bye, Daryl. Thanks. Bye. All right. Well, yeah, I can hear you. I think that we're getting really close to our time. Does anybody have any final questions for Jessica? It might just be us on talking with Fran and I, but I'll show you mine. <laughs> ooh. Ah, ooh. Uh, ooh. And on the, nice. other, on the other side, nice. you'll see the template for my new cabinet doors, just the way you want them. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful <laughs> well i'm still working on stars but here's where we are oh i love it those stars look good what are you talking about there Great. you go very nice i love it good job there you go everyone oh. Woo <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Jess. And remember, anybody who's on the line here, if you have anybody who needs to learn more about their communication system, if um, you know that they need one, please enter into the form. Um, there's a link in the chat box, and I'll also be sending out this video tomorrow to everyone, as well as a link to Jess's Etsy site so that you can look at all of her wildlife paintings and see if there's something for you. Um, anyway, we'll see you all next week for next month's Vertical Learn Something. Right. Thanks, Jess. Great job. Thank right. you. Thank you for so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for joining. All right. Bye, all.